this man is a Hall of Fame mensch. I do this thing every week, my honorable mention, highlighting the good people who do good things, the great people doing great things in the sport of mixed martial arts. I could, I could put this man on, on that segment each and every week because he, I mean, he possesses a heart of gold. He's an incredible human being. He's a former UFC fighter, Bellator fighter. He is the big pygmy himself, Justin Wren, who has just been, I mean, he, he, he makes humanity better. He really does. And like I say, a heart of gold. And last week, uh, he did an amazing thing for a young boy and continues to do an amazing thing and amazing things for a young boy named Raiden. Let's say hello to him and hear from him what he did last week. Justin, how are you? Hey, guys. I'm uh, doing really well, Ariel. Thank you for having me on the show. It's great to talk to you again. And by the way, are you okay? I understand that you're, you're evacuating somewhere in California because of <laughs> uh, some fires. What's going on over there? Yeah, it's wild. I think it would show we're just stuck in traffic. Um, everyone in Encino, is that where we are? Encino. Um, we're having to evacuate from our Airbnb. Um, I'm actually headed to, to Mike Tyson's uh, podcast. It's going to be awesome to, to meet that guy, uh, that legend. And uh, we're, we're already planned to go on his show before all this happened with Raiden. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's thrown a kink in our schedule. That's for sure. We had to load up everything. Wow. And all of our stuff's in the back here. Um, and so that's a little wild, uh, but it's awesome to see all the support that's been rallied um, for Raiden. Uh, our nonprofit last year expanded its mission um, from only the, the, the most oppressed or bullied people group in the world, the Pygmies, uh, to also doing bully prevention here stateside um, or in North America through a digital online uh, bully prevention and character development curriculum. So uh, it's been awesome uh, getting a lot more um, effort here stateside um, with kids and martial arts academies. We're currently in over 100 martial arts academies with our bully prevention curriculum called Heroes in Waiting. And then it's kind of wild. It was going on mics today, uh, Joe Rogan's on, on Wednesday at noon. And then all this blew up with, uh, with Raiden. And he's a local kid in Oklahoma. And uh, I got to meet with him numerous times now, actually more than 20 times um, and Rafael Lovato Jr. has loved on him, given him and his uh, brother, younger brother Brock, a scholarship to Rafael Lovato Jr.'s um, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and Mixed Martial Arts Academy. So pretty awesome. It's incredible. Could you tell us from the beginning the story? Because I think there might be some people who still don't know about Raiden and what he went through and how you got involved. Can you tell us um, the, the story from the beginning and how you initially found out about him? Sure. So there's a, a local boy in Oklahoma City. Um, and or at least Oklahoma City Metro. And people had reached out to us. His family had already heard about Fight for the Forgotten uh, because Raiden's grown up getting very extremely heavily bullied ever since he started school, but it really has amplified since he was nine years old. And that's when they found out he has, he has autism. Um, he was born or he's on that spectrum, the ASD spectrum. And then he was born deaf in his right ear. So he has a um, hearing aid. And then he's diabetic as well. Um, so he's got childhood uh, diabetes. And he's on seven different kinds of medication from depression to his autism medication to uh, his diabetic medication to his ADD medication. Um, and he's gained 110 pounds uh, in the last 10 or 11 months. So you can imagine from being autistic to being diabetic to ADD. Uh, ADD um, to depression. Uh, he's just uh, been incredibly targeted um, and bullied. And he's a sweet, sweet kid. He's He's got a, a heart of gold, it seems, and uh, he's a big teddy bear. Uh, I've had many um, dinners at his house, um, him at my house, uh, him and his family, and at our offices as well. But yes, this is what happens. Um, that's the question you asked. Sorry, we're, we're in all sorts of traffic in LA. No, I understand. Uh, but yeah. So he a video surfaced and uh, is a young boy, 12 years old, big, big kid. But uh, he was in the bathroom at the urinal and there's 10 or 12 kids in the bathroom, four or five filming it. And a guy's just pummeling him at the urinal. Uh, and then the very next day um, after school, uh, just on some yard, uh, he gets jumped by numerous kids, uh, at least three that were on the video. Um, hitting him from all different angles, kicking him. Um, and so he's been relentlessly bullied at least since he was nine years old. And they found him um, even suicidal. He had wrote on his arms, uh, I want to kill myself in Sharpie. Uh, and 
people reached out to us and we reached out to, to his family and just said, hey, I, I know what it's like to go through getting bullied like this. Um, and so we just want to be here as a support system, fight for the forgotten. We're right in your backyard. And if we could uh, get together, that'd be great. Well, I went to the, the doctor with them. Uh, they came over for a dinner. Rafael Lovato Jr., uh, his girlfriend was there, and we just loved on him. Our fight for the Forgotten Team we just had a great dinner. His dad says he's a chicken eating fool, so we got some Chick fil A because they really like that restaurant. And um, then we just started a relationship, a friendship, and we organized a uh, press conference because everyone was coming around trying to get his parents, trying to get an exclusive with Raven. Um, people started cyberbullying um, the. The, the bullies, which I understand they need to to um, to be addressed and there needs to be swift and prompt action and they need to be held accountable. Um, even legal stuff happened. Uh, but people started posting these young people's 12 and 13 year olds home addresses online, circling them on Google Maps and saying, this is where they are, go get them. So they even literally had to cancel the school that Raiden goes to one day because of death threats at wow. the school. So we just hosted a, a quick press conference with all the Oklahoma City um, news, and I was sitting there alongside um, his parents, and his parents gave a very heartfelt message that they want to forgive the kids, that they, they need to be held accountable, but um, they, they want this to be turned into a positive, that this very negative thing in their son's life that's been going on for years and years, hopefully now it can be addressed, the bullying can stop, but that this could be a... a, a, a a place of shifting for the school district, for all the kids, not just their own son, but that the school culture can be, um, I don't know, that it can cultivate kindness and acceptance and, um, and just a lot of different character development qualities, like how, how do we build resilience in our young people, uh, but also how do we put love and compassion in action? And so that's kind of our role. Um, our vision is to defeat hate with love, and our mission is to knock out bullying worldwide. And so uh, this case with Raiden, uh, it's blown up. It's, it's beyond anything I could have thought of with uh, Baker Mayfield, uh, OU guy who they're big fans of, um, and now a Cleveland Brown that posted about it, uh, Dylan Dennis, uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the L.A. Chargers, um, just so many people. Mick Foley, their, their favorite wrestler, WWE wrestler, uh, making him a personal video because his son um, also had uh, struggles with autism. Uh, and so... Uh, there's been an outpouring of support for this young man, which is absolutely awesome. Incredible. Now, has he been back to school since all this happened? He has. He and has what's been that been like? Um, it's been good. So uh, this happened on a Thursday, the urinal instance. Then on Friday, it was the after school incident. And his dad said that this is this is the sad thing. If it wasn't just if it wasn't videoed, nothing would be done. Um, so we're fortunate that, that it was videoed back to back days because they say this is a common occurrence in Raiden's life. Um, and he has gone back to school and he's got a favorite uh, uh, on site police officer at the school that's kind of uh, walking around with them. And then so that happened on Thursday, then Friday, then Monday, there was craziness. He went back to school. Tuesday, school is canceled because of death threats. And then on Wednesday, we, we had dinner with him on that Tuesday. In fact, the school was canceled. All the craziness was happening. We said, hey, just come over to our offices. No one knows uh, that you'll be there. Um, it's just us. We're all alone. Just come over for the day. Um, so they did. And then on Wednesday, um, he wanted to go back to his, his home church. It's a church called uh, Life Church in Yukon, Oklahoma. And uh, I, I talked with their youth pastor and stuff. And he said, hey, have Raiden come. We're going to rally support around him, have his family come. And so they had me speak for maybe 10, 15 minutes beforehand. And then 300 kids were, were there um, to, to support Raiden, to give him high fives and hugs and wow. uh, cheer for him. And so I asked him, we, we left there, and I asked Raiden, I go, what was your favorite part? And uh, uh, when we left, there were some girls um, that said, hey, Raiden, are you doing okay? And like he was kind of speechless. He goes, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, we see, see you here next week? And he goes, yeah, I'll be here next week. And so uh, it was pretty fun was we asked him what his favorite part was. And he said everyone cheering for him made him want to cry. Wow. But the girls, it was, it was definitely the girls. That was his favorite part. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, and, and, I mean, you continue, like, we've talked about you and Fight for the Forgotten. 
and Dustin Poirier, and recently linking up with Frank Mir and you know the 242 with the donations of Habib. You continue. I, I, I just I can't imagine. You're just such an amazing human being, honestly. And and I th I know that's like a very simple way. Is this now your full time job? Are you no longer fighting anymore? Do you feel like you have a higher calling in life? Rather than cage fighting, you need to be helping out these individuals. Chris Cyborg, of course, as well, has, has helped out with Fight for the Forgotten. Yeah, it's been incredible. You know, la last week, I've seen pictures of these kids that are rallying around Raven. That's a high school in the area. Um, another picture you showed was Jeremy, who just walked all the way across America for Fight for the Forgotten. He walked 3,100 miles. He started at the Brooklyn Bridge, ended at the Sundial Bridge um, in Redding, California. Wow. Um, and this is this is what I've dedicated to most. I still want to fight, but um, I've actually been out here doing medical testing uh, of my own um, with a doctor named Dr. Daniel Amen, and he's been checking out my brain, also my second brain, my gut, uh, my blood. Uh, this week I've done, that's actually why I'm out here in LA, I've done uh, cheek or swabs, cheek swabs uh, for samples, urine, blood, stool, um, hair samples. Uh, to figure out what's going on with my health because uh, they think I either have methylquin toxicity of the brain, which is a malaria drug. Um, I also have a parasite called schistosomiasis. Um, there's just been a lot of stuff going on with my, my gut bacteria is like fully badly overgrown. Um, so there's been a lot of, a lot of self-sacrifice, but I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, this is my calling. It's my purpose. And I've discovered that it's one thing to fight against people for competition, and it's another thing to fight for people um, in life and helping build better lives and seeing them win against the biggest battles and fight um, of their life is what I'm called to. And so I, I do hope that I fight again. Um, uh, I'm pursuing that with Bellator. Uh, I'm trying to get just healthy. Uh, but during that time, I, I'm fully focused. What Fight for the Forgotten is what I'm going to do for, for the rest of my life. So that's what I'm focused on now. And I understand people can help out Raiden if they want to as well. I, I, we saw that you tweeted out a link to a GoFundMe account. What does that go to? Yeah. So that GoFundMe was started by a, name named, uh, a guy named Jacob Wells. He's actually buddies with like Theo Vaughn and Kelby Crew out there. Uh, but he's a local guy in Oklahoma City. He's actually a good friend of mine, but he's a good friend of the family, Raiden's family. And so fight for the forgotten, we can't actually direct money towards Raiden personally, um, because as a 501c3, it has to be an unbiased pool of applicants. They have to meet a certain criteria. And then from that, we can make selections with our board of directors. Um, but an outside source uh, like Jacob, uh, who knows the family and knows their situation, he can support them through a GoFundMe. And so that's what they've started. Um, and I can post about it and I can let people know, like right now, you can go support Raiden. Um, and what we're trying to do is get uh, $8,000, I think, for his medical treatment. I was with him at the doctor when he was diagnosed with a concussion. Wow. Um, but which, I, I'm one of those guys that thinks everything happens for a reason. I had just started doing hyperbarics, uh, hyperbaric oxygen therapy for myself, getting myself healthy. Well, the doctor goes, one of the best things for concussions is hyperbarics. Let's try to get him into that, uh, get him into pressure. Oh. level in his mitochondria um and then from there uh he'll start to to have increased blood flow in his brain and this concussion won't be as bad as what it what it would have been so anyways we were able to to take him in uh that day he got a prescription for it i was able to take him to my appointment there was an open chamber next to me so it's just cool how it all happened so um yeah, it's, it's, it's a GoFundMe called Stand With Raiden. $8,000 goes to his medical treatment. $5,000 goes to his counseling. He's going to need intensive counseling from, uh, from public shaming to being ridiculed to being assaulted uh, to being bullied for, for years and from that being suicidal since he was nine years old, from nine to tw 12. So three years now he's, he's had those thoughts of wanting to take his own life. Um, and then really what the GoFundMe I think was started for most, Jacob knew that the biggest need the family had. Uh, we're over at their house, actually the grandparents' house, and Grandma Claudia made us a uh, meatloaf, and it was awesome. <laughs> uh, she can cook, that's for sure. And um, But they need to be reunited with their parents. The kids have, have been um, living at their grandparents in a mobile home park uh, for three years now because 
uh, Danny and Scotland, Raiden's parents, had to take in Scotland's mother. Um, and so I think it's a two bedroom place, maybe one bath, I, I forget what it is. But anyways, the, the boys had to go live with the grandparents. If we could raise 30, 35,000, 40,000 on that GoFundMe, um, we could get them a better mobile home, a three bedroom, two bath, uh, that the boys can go live at home again. Um, so that's what that's what we're trying to do is see how we can turn this around for the best situation for the family. So uh, they, there's been a lot of struggle there. The dad works hard. He doesn't want a handout. He has two jobs. Uh, Scotland is an incredible mother, but she has to be available to take him to um, all his medical treatments, his counseling, whether it's his ear or his diabetes or his autism or his ADHD. Um, he just ha he does have special needs, but he's a special special kid that's for sure and i think it's special in a good way um and so how can we just rally support around them jacob took the initiative uh, to start this gofundme for the family they were in tears when they heard what jacob wanted to do um, and jacob works at a local car dealership in, in oklahoma city uh, that just does so many great things in the community it's called hudeberg and so this is just part of their hudeberg helps campaign um, where they help people in need in the community and so uh it's something pretty awesome well done, my man. You are the honorable mensch. You you are uh, you you are the best that this sport and humanity has to offer, and you continue to inspire and do good things for great things, excellent things, amazing things for the less fortunate. So uh, when when I found out about this, I wasn't surprised, and I also wanted to talk to you about it because it's been a minute since we last spoke. But uh, keep doing what you're doing. If there's anything that we can do to help as well, and I also want to say that I stand with Raiden, and we all stand with Raiden, and 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 we hope that uh, you know he he uh, he gets well soon is able to get over the concussion and that this, this kind of bullying, I I've talked about it before people filming kids getting bullied. I mean, it's just, it, it breaks my heart. And so hopefully people like you standing up for these kids can, can deter these bullies from doing this and, 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 and make them do more positive things. So thank you very much for doing it, especially in the midst of this crazy day that you're having. Uh, we really appreciate it, Justin, all the best to you and keep it up, my man. Hey, Ariel, thank you so much. Uh, I, I was supposed to tell you guys that uh, we are doing a fundraising competition at the end of this year. It actually starts November 1st. It's at fightfortheforgotten.org. And we're doing a martial arts academy transformation for the winner. And the top 10 get draft picks to have training days or experiences with martial arts superstars like Chris Cyborg, Dustin Poirier, Frank Mir, Rose Namajunas, Pat Berry, Paige Van Zandt, Austin Vanderford. Wow. Um, Rafael Lovato Jr., Sean J. Hibero. Um, so anyways, you can just check out our website, fightforthefgod.org. Go to Heroes in Waiting. That's our end-of-the-year fundraising tournament or competition. And uh, for martial arts individuals, fans, um, or academies, jiu-jitsu gyms, you guys can sign up for that uh, and have an awesome opportunity to help us raise funds for knocking out bullying here stateside and also drilling more wells. And then from that, you can get some amazing stuff at your academy. So thank you so much, Ariel. You, you're uh, such an encouragement, my man. Hello, everyone. It's Ariel Hoani. I just came here to thank you for watching our ESPN YouTube channel. It's the best. You know what else is the best? The ESPN app. You can get highlights, analysis, all that stuff and more. And if you want premium content and live streaming sports, there's only one place for all of that. It's ESPN+. Plus. 